Greetings, I'm Patricia, 38 years old. Just got back from work and something unexpected happened. I stumbled upon a letter that completely altered my world. Until then, I thought I had a perfect family, a loving husband, Daniel, and three kids. They meant everything to me. Daniel used to express his love, calling me his soulmate and thanking God for having me as his incredible wife. We had this mutual feeling of being the love of each other's lives. Little did I know it was all a facade. The letter shattered the illusion. Daniel, my supposed soulmate, revealed that he found someone else. According to him, our love couldn't compare to the newfound connection he had with this mysterious woman. He left a note confessing he was gone, chasing a love stronger than what we had. It's strange how quickly love can vanish when someone you trusted betrays you. That's my reality now. I regret to inform you that I must take this step. Please refrain from reaching out to me as I won't be returning. I extend my best wishes to you and the children, but it is time for me to live with my true family. He cannot subject me to this. It goes beyond merely abandoning his family. I am left grappling with how to explain this to the kids. Why, God, have you put me through this? The tears continued until I had none left. I texted my mother-in-law, Julie, instructing her to pick the kids up from school and keep them at her place. Without questioning, Julie welcomed the kids with open arms. She was a caring grandma and a loving mother-in-law. Everything seemed perfect. Even my in-laws treated me like their own. I never saw this coming and found myself blaming me for driving Daniel away. Various thoughts consumed my mind before I reached a point of complete despair. I called Benjamin, Daniel's brother, and requested his presence. When Benjamin arrived, he was shocked to see me in such a state. He inquired about what had happened and where Daniel was. I broke down, explaining that Daniel had left me, and I had no idea where to find him. I handed Benjamin the letter I had discovered in the empty house. As he read it, he cursed loudly to himself. Without saying a word to me, Benjamin grabbed his phone and attempted to call Daniel, only to realize that Daniel had blocked him. After trying Daniel's office, Benjamin informed me that he needed to call Daniel's parents. I found myself overwhelmed, uncertain of what steps to take. Benjamin made the call, urging Julie and my father-in-law Edward to rush over. In no time, both arrived at the house while the kids were safely with a trusted neighbor. When I showed them the letter, their disbelief was palpable. I can't believe this. What's wrong with Daniel? How could he do this to his family, Patricia? Don't cry. You need to be strong for the kids. Edward comforted me. Determined, he vowed to bring Daniel back and make him take responsibility. Expressing his disbelief, Edward questioned how he could have raised a son capable of such actions, emphasizing that Daniel should have faced the family instead of fleeing. I tried his office. They said he resigned two months ago. No one knows where he went. He planned this for months, acting normal all the while. I wouldn't have suspected a thing, Edward revealed. Disappointed and feeling ashamed, he insisted that Daniel must face the consequences of his actions. He expressed willingness to accept if Daniel had fallen in love with someone else but condemned him for abandoning his kids. The uncertainty of how to explain Daniel's actions to the children weighed heavily on us all. No one had a satisfactory answer. We were all aware of the devastating impact it would have on the kids. The pain of being abandoned by a parent hit close to home for me. I shared the haunting memories of my father leaving after divorcing my mom, deeming me a painful reminder of his past. I cut ties with him understanding the emotional toll it takes. In a similar vein, I empathized with the feeling of abandonment, recounting my mother's struggle and her inability to care for me. Fending for myself in foster care became a challenging chapter in my life. I couldn't bring myself to subject my children to such heartache. I had to maintain composure for their sake, ensuring they always felt the warmth of their mother's love. Paul and James and John, my 9, 10, and 12-year-old sons, displayed a surprising level of maturity for their age. Realizing it was time to reveal the truth, I sought counsel from my in-laws. After a shared conversation, I gathered my sons in a secluded space, sensing they had sensed something awry since entering with Benjamin. In privacy, I addressed them, acknowledging that they likely had an inkling about recent events. Apologetically, I uttered the words that their father had departed. The shock on their faces was palpable as they grappled with the reality of his absence. Dismayed, they questioned the sincerity of my revelation. The disbelief echoed in their voices as they asked why he would leave and what wrong they had committed. Assuring them of their innocence, I explained that their father's departure stemmed from his desire to be with someone else. Accepting the gravity of the situation, I expressed my regret and conveyed that it would be the four of us moving forward. Their response was a heavy silence, 
punctuated by exchanged glances before retreating to their respective rooms. Recognizing their need for space, I allowed them the solitude they sought. Benjamin, a pillar of support, decided to stay over, while my in-laws, promising continued check-ins, departed. The ensuing day saw my children cocooned in their rooms, prompting concern. Benjamin, attempting to break the isolation, invited them for dinner, only to be met with declined appetites and assertions of solitude. Meanwhile, I grappled with maintaining my composure. As Benjamin took the initiative to contact Daniel's friends in search of information, my worry deepened. However, no one knew of his whereabouts, and the shared indignation among them hinted at the severity of his actions. The promise of updates provided a glimmer of hope. The next morning, the children emerged for breakfast, their expressions a mix of understanding and resilience. Rushing to embrace me, they assured me of their support, expressing anger towards their absent father. Firmly stating that they no longer wished to see his face, they declared their allegiance to me. Despite my reminder of their love for their father, their determination to move forward without him remained unwavering. Mom, we still have love for him, but forgiveness seems distant. If he believes we don't hold significance in his life, he can keep his distance. Witnessing the unwavering support from my kids was astounding. Their concern for me overshadowed their worry for their father. The neglect from Daniel had become evident over the past year. Despite our efforts to address the issue, he remained indifferent to our concerns. I attempted to organize family activities, hoping he would engage, attributing his behavior to work-related stress. I believed he cherished his children and merely needed time to gather himself. My assumptions were shattered when, after days of trying to contact him, I discovered he had deactivated his phone. Reporting the situation to the police yielded no results. The suggestion from my in-laws to hire a private investigator was financially unfeasible, given my role as the family's primary breadwinner. The hope that he might return faded over two months. My in-laws and I endeavored to support the kids, enlisting them in therapy to provide a safe space for expressing emotions. Benjamin, recognizing my ongoing struggle, urged me to join therapy too. Five months later, our quest for Daniel's whereabouts led us to the revelation that he had left with his co-worker, Catherine, an individual I had previously voiced concerns about. I had cautioned Daniel about Catherine's inappropriate behavior, but he dismissed my worries, assuring me that there was nothing to be concerned about. Discovering the truth about Catherine validated my initial concerns, yet I never anticipated Daniel leaving me for her. He remained oblivious to the extent of the pain he caused, hindering any legal recourse for child support and divorce. Consulting a lawyer revealed the difficulty of pursuing legal action without an address. It became clear that Daniel's deliberate evasion aimed at avoiding financial responsibilities towards our children. Disgust for him festered within me, exacerbated by the tainted memories the house now held. Living there had become an unbearable challenge, and the kids shared the desire to escape its haunting echoes. Discussing our predicament, we concluded that relocating was the best course of action. The house, owned by my in-laws and intended as Daniel's inheritance, demanded rent that strained our finances. In pursuit of a more affordable dwelling, we encountered a surprising shift in my in-laws' stance. Upon broaching the topic of moving out, my in-laws revealed a new perspective. They acknowledged the challenges and proposed an alternative solution. Patricia, we've been contemplating your situation. It's clear that living in the house has become untenable for you. We understand your financial constraints. How about this? We'll rent a three-bedroom apartment for all of us. We don't need the excess space anymore, my mother-in-law suggested. Concerned about the potential increase in rent, I assured them, I've thought about it. I plan to sell my engagement ring for some extra money. It should help us until I find a better job. Eventually, I'll save up to buy a new house. Contrary to my expectations, they had a different proposition. No need for that, dear. Your mother-in-law and I have decided to give you the house. Daniel no longer deserves it. He won't be getting a cent from us. Consider it a gift for you and the grandkids. We've already updated our will and everything is in place, my father-in-law declared. Protesting their generosity, I insisted, You don't have to do that. I can manage on my own. The house is rightfully Daniel's inheritance, too. Hush now, Patricia. Daniel is getting very little from us, and we've made our decision. The house will be yours, my mother-in-law asserted their resolve unyielding. Unable to sway them, I felt gratitude for their unwavering support. They claimed to love me like their own, justifying the inheritance in their eyes. We moved to a different apartment, embracing a fresh start. I decided to put the house up for rent, utilizing the income to cover our new residence. In the midst of this transition, 
Benjamin emerged as a supportive figure, filling the void left by their absent father. Our shared experiences and time spent together kindled a connection that evolved into something deeper. A year after Daniel's departure, we approached my in-laws about our developing relationship, relieved to find their acceptance and understanding. Even the children expressed joy and a desire for Benjamin to become a permanent part of their lives. Unfortunately, thoughts of the future were clouded by the absence of a divorce. I harbored a determination to make Daniel accountable for the suffering he inflicted upon me and the kids. The day of reckoning seemed imminent. Nearly five years elapsed, and Daniel's whereabouts remained a mystery. His deliberate isolation from his past life rendered any attempts to locate him futile. We had no desire for him to re-enter our lives and were indifferent to his activities. My relationship with Benjamin continued to thrive, and under his guidance the children flourished. However, our newfound stability was disrupted when my father-in-law passed away. The loss deeply affected us, and amid the grieving process, I took charge of organizing the funeral arrangements. Daniel, unreachable, didn't attend, a fact that Julie deemed better for everyone. Edward's passing, ownership of the house was transferred to me. The decision to sell the property was unanimous among the family, aligning with the desire to move closer to Julie's residence. A swift sale to a lovely couple paved the way for our relocation to Benjamin's house, a move prompted by his inherited property and the twins' preference to be near him. Settling into our new home, our past resurfaced unexpectedly. Daniel, confused about the developments during his absence, contacted me from an unknown number. Shocked by his sudden reappearance, I cut the call in disbelief. Daniel, seeking answers, decided to approach his brother to unravel the events. It was at Benjamin's house that he unexpectedly found me and the children, marking an unexpected and perplexing reunion. Why on earth do you reside here, Patricia? What transpired with the residence? I visited and discovered an unfamiliar couple inhabiting it. What have you done with my home, Daniel? You return after more than five years, and all you're fixated on is the house. Did you even miss your children? Aren't you curious about their well-being? I couldn't care less, Patricia. I just want information about my deceased house. It is now under my ownership. Why are there other occupants? They informed me that the house has been sold. So, you were aware of Dad's passing and still chose not to attend the funeral. Do you ever feel any shame for not acknowledging your own children? What's going on with you? Benjamin, stop talking. I found a happier life with Catherine. She's carrying my child, and we're planning to live together in my home. Now, who granted you the right to interfere with my inheritance? Your father intended the house for me, Daniel, making it my inheritance, not yours. He did allocate some money for you, and that's the extent of it. I've already sold the house because living there was unbearable. Wait, that's impossible. Dad assured me the house would be my own. I'll take legal action against you. You three are essentially stealing from me. Good luck, bro. Trying to prove that in court won't get you far. We're on solid legal ground. If you insist on wasting money, go ahead. Now leave before I involve the cops for trespassing. Your presence is no longer welcome here. This isn't the end of our discussion. Expect to hear from my lawyer. With that, Daniel stormed off in anger. I was furious myself, feeling sorry for my kids who had a neglectful father more concerned about his new family than them. Unsure of how the kids would react, Benjamin helped me steady my nerves before breaking the news to the twins. We waited until they returned from school, but even they were angered, expressing that they wanted nothing to do with him. They were well aware of the kind of person he was. A week later, a letter from Daniel's lawyer arrived. Julie, already aware of the situation, was devastated by Daniel's cruelty. She declared that he was no longer a part of the family and expressed her intention to disown him. That's when I unveiled my plan for revenge. Armed with the address from the lawyer's letter, I decided to sue him for abandonment, divorce, and child support. It was time for him to face the consequences of his actions. With enough pressure, he would be compelled to agree to my terms of divorce. I planned to charge him for child abandonment and neglect, ensuring he paid for his mistakes. If he chose to sue us for the inheritance he would lose, his lawyer would drain him of his finances. It was time for him to bear the weight of the consequences. Indeed, I concur with your perspective. He must take responsibility and confront his errors. Fear not, Patricia, for we stand by your side. I am committed to assisting you in securing a proficient attorney for your case. Daniel will bear the consequences of distressing you and the twins. Once this chapter concludes, we will devise a more enduring solution for our living situation. Remaining true to his commitment, Benjamin facilitated the acquisition of a skilled lawyer. I initiated divorce proceedings and pursued a claim for a fair share of his assets. 
The children, too, testified against him in court, leaving the judge appalled at Daniel's actions. Daniel, accompanied by his pregnant mistress, found himself unable to mount a defense. I also opted to sue the mistress for alienation of affection, a case I won conclusively. Subsequently, the court decreed that both Daniel and Catherine were left financially destitute. Despite their pleas, I stood firm, believing they deserved the consequences. Daniel's attempt to claim inheritance money met with ridicule in court, and he left empty-handed. Realizing his obligations for pending child support, Daniel decided to terminate his parental rights upon the twins' request. Though initially hesitant, he acknowledged the children's desire to sever ties. With the termination, he was relieved of future child support obligations. The funds acquired from the lawsuit were judiciously invested in college funds for the twins. Contemplating the purchase of a house, I received an unexpected proposal from Benjamin upon the finalization of the divorce. Eagerly accepting, we were liberated to marry. Despite Daniel's resentment towards us, we held firm, asserting that the consequences were a result of his actions. His relationship with his mistress unraveled further, marked by incessant pleas for financial aid, which we wisely chose to ignore. In the end, my ex-husband and his mistress reaped the repercussions of their choices. Meanwhile, I embarked on a new life with an exceptional man, a superior husband and father compared to Daniel.